Fala galera, sou o Juan Paulo, sou do Brasil e eu só ganhei o YCS em Indianapolis, que é louco, porque eu estava fazendo bem, recentemente, pelo menos, Rio, yeah, got up eight, and Vegas, e estava lá em Rio, Gotap 8 e Vegas, terceiro lugar, no Dream 3. And now I finally won with this deck, which is a deck I know a lot of people don't like Snake Eyes a lot, but I feel like there's a lot of skills expression in Snake Eyes. So yeah, I'm really happy to to win an event um, in this format because I really like this. And I will show my deck and it's playing what I feel like is necessary. So the stars, the bonfires. I mean. I feel like those are don't, they don't need the explanation. I, I kind of count this as I started like this make you play. So I think there's nothing to say here. Maybe I can talk about something that I'm not here, which is one for one. I don't like one for one, one, for one at all. Um, one for one is a card that, unfortunately, it's a much worse Black Witch because it it doesn't go well with uh, not not super well with Snake Ash. But the, the biggest problem is that going second you need to specifically discard a. Uh, um, a monster, and then it's really weird to be forced to discard a monster. I feel like that happened to to Chris in the finals. He had, you know, I was told that he had a, a one for one in hand with no monster to discard. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Uh, not a bad card, but it's something that I don't like playing, especially going second when you use all your monsters are hand traps that you usually want to discard, and then you use them to not lose, and you have nothing to discard. You can count that as an extender or a starter. Wait a second. So yeah, and the the snake eye cards, uh, not starters, but I feel like this is obvious. Of course, I consider playing only one. Um, it's doable. It's possible. But I think it's better to play two. Anyway, and this card is absolutely insane. This deck got so much better because of this. Um, and yeah, this help so many lies you you play better into hand traps you play your end board is stronger you have access to number 38 so it's pretty good i would still play this and then the other the two the two spells and then i have the hand traps uh which i play 18 hand traps unfortunately i don't think there is one from brazil there is no other way to play right now if not this. Um, I think the main concession here, uh, like this, the, main, the two main cards uh, I talk about is Nibiru and Ogre. Uh, I am shocked by how better Ogre got in the mirror match, especially because of the inclusion of this card, so you have a real target a lot, but many times you can do this as a board break on my team or a Palooza, and that's really useful. Uh, and of course, this covers other matchups pretty well. I play only Snake Eye, and I play only three decks that weren't Snake Eye decks in this event. I play one Voiceless, one Tampai, and one Melodious. And every other deck was Snake Eye, either Fire King or Pure or Cash. So it was like, I don't know, 11 or 12 Snake Eyes. And I'm talking about that because that was the reason I played Nibiru, because I made the deck to try to win the event, which I succeed. <laughs> um, and that card really helps in the mirror match, especially in combinations. And many times you're forced to not play around it, and you won me some games against fire decks, and it was pretty good. It's a concession, but if your intention is to go really deep in a tournament like this, um, I, I built the deck to try to win the event. So. It worked, it worked. Uh, so those are the hand traps. And uh, I also played a lot of push. In my opinion, those are push, uh, which is call by two talents and cross out. And by the way, I played 44 cards, uh, which is something that I personally usually don't like to do. Uh, but I feel like th in this deck, you need to have the 18 hand traps. I feel like 15 hand trap is on, it is on the low side. I know it's crazy to say that, but I think it is. Snake Eyes is really resilient, especially because people are playing combinations of this or cash, and that gives some resistance to hand traps. So you need to draw like two, three minimum to even start a conversation about a, about a game. Um, most of the time, of course. But I do like those cards as going second cards as well. I mean, this card just won the YCS. 
uh, with the skill drain, which is something that a lot of people don't do. I like keeping cross out. One second, I feel like this probably was one of the biggest edges, not only because of skill drain, but in general, I think skill drain, not skill drain, cross out is a really good card in the mirror match going second because the most important part in the mirror match is to um, make your card resolve. Uh, so talent doesn't make your card resolve. Like if I go Snake Ash and get Valor, my talent will do something. I will draw a card, see hand or take, going second. But it, my Snake Ash didn't resolve. If I cross out, it will resolve and I get a popular which you get the feel like it's so much better because you get a body and you get a tempo and you get a snake double star um, so make your card resolve your, your game plan moving forward is better so that's why I decided to not uh, main cash in this deck as well because I really want my cards to resolve and that's why I don't play three talents I play those first like the cross out and the call by and then I started putting talents um, and then the deck has 44 cards because I needed space in my side deck for side patterns as well. So it works really well. The, I can show side patterns in another, another opportunity. Um, but yeah, I keep this in the mirror match all the time going second. And I feel like almost no one does this. And this was a huge edge. I not only negate the skill drain in the finals, but I also um, negate like multiple normal cards like Zenkai Ash, Valor, Ogre, I don't know, whatever. Okay? So pretty, pretty good. I feel like this is really important and this is one of. In the, in the gameplay, technical play part, one of the biggest edge that I have. Uh, also playing 18 hand traps and having six pushes. Um, and not playing cash, I think. I mean, there was some things. So, this is the main deck, 44 cards. Um, let's do extra deck first. Uh, so, extra deck, there is not a lot of things that comes to mind. I feel like those two. So, I'm not gonna talk about those. Everyone played those same 13. I feel like those 13 are standard right now. I mean, those almost 13 because you have this. If you play Snake of a Star, I feel like this is important too. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about, this is pretty good. This helps a lot, especially if people try to do some take strategies in the mirror match, which happens a lot, especially in the US. People really like doing talent, uh, mind control, change of hearts. Um, I don't like that. I feel like it's better to just go full hand trap and some board breaks, but your main thing needs to be hand trap still. Uh, so this helps when people are more on the board break side and you open two engine cards like Snake Ash and, and Black Witch. So, and the last card that I played was Dracosac, spoiler in my side deck. So I played a Dracosac and I played Link Spider. This card is extremely important. Um, because now the combos of this deck, uh, especially the stronger combos, they usually open you to Nibiru, but not in a normal way, like, like before, you get Nib before, and you have the Flumbers, and you up the Flumbers and put the AP behind, and then it was fine. But now, most of the time, the spots for Nib, if you try to do the stronger combo, usually you have the Temple with the Snake Double Star behind, and then it's not the same, because it's not Flumbers. So in that case, not only that case, but in the case I get Nib, I can get the token, make Link Spider, and do SP, banish that, and then now I have an SP, and I have Temple and Snake Double Star. Uh, usually get a Snake Eye Ash or Oak or Poplar behind, and now I have that, and Princess usually in Grave as well. So it helps a lot. I use like sometimes this tournament, uh, and it helps uh, uh, in top 8. This was relevant. And yeah, that's it. And this is. And I feel like I need to talk about this because this is also not common. Um, I really like the cash cards and I couldn't decide what to do with them because I wanted to play but I prefer those. So what I do is that I side the cash cards. So I have those five cash cards and that's why I said that I needed space in my side deck because I want my deck going first post side to be absolutely ridiculous. That's what I want. And so post side going first I will have all those cards because I have another talent in my side deck so I will have all that as resistant to hand trap so this deck going first also in my testing both sides it's almost impossible to lose and I feel like my win rate going second is really not going second both sides is really high because uh, my side patterns and my decisions both sides are really really good in this manner so this really really helps because also this card complements another card really well which is skill drain which is by far the the most impactful floodgate of this format and everyone is playing that and that's why i decided in the mirror match to 
keep the cross out in second, which I still believe is good. And one skill training in the half game for the final, which is super funny because I talked to a lot of people and I feel like most people thought that it wasn't a good idea, but I was sure it was a good idea. And he half game for the final, it was really funny because he uh, Chris went black, which is card skill drain. So I knew he had another one because there is absolutely no reason to discard skill drain. So I knew he had another one. And I look at my hand, there was a cross out, and I was like, I just need to not draw my skill drain, a six card, please, I can't lose like this. And then I did, and I drew something else, I drew Temple, I think, for turn. And, yep, and I used that. So my deck going first is really, really strong. Those cards, they're also side in. Um, in some matches, even going second, for example, Runic decks, Tempai, and going first against everything, there are some matchups, I feel like, um, what's the name, Melodious as well. There are some matches that I do side in going second, but I usually prefer to have them as a going first card. And yeah, th all those cards they do really well together because in the mirror match, I also have Metal Thronos going first. So my deck going first has all those cards. Um, I have all those together uh, in my deck going first in the mirror match. So it's really, really hard because Metal Thronos is pretty, this card is absolutely ridiculous in the mirror match. It's by far by far, like, by a long shot, the best card in the mirror match. I know a lot of people are playing my control chips, the cards, all, the, all those things. This card is a million times better, um, because you negate the card and you get the body. The body is so, so huge. Uh, so, I feel like the body is so huge. Also, going first, this is pretty much a Solemn Strike, which I did in the finals, right? He used the Black Witch and I used it. And I had a skill drain, I don't know if you guys could see it, but I had a skill drain that I decided not to use it. So it was pretty good. Um, you can side this against some other matchups as well. For example, against Tempai going second, when I choose second, I do side this as well because I can do on if I want on the seal by summoning this, because it's dragon and white. Um, or Veiler or Ogre as well. There's other options. There's some other matches that you can do, but those are the main ones, main ones. And yeah. That's it. And the last card is Bell because this has a lot of coverage against a lot of the other decks, right? Um, against Brendan, against Melodius, uh, against what else? I'm against a lot of decks. And um, uh, Lab. I like it. I like it, especially because Melodius was um, getting more popular. So I decided to. Wait, this is, this is the same deck, right? Uh, I decided to to have the Bell in for that. There's probably things I'm forgetting. I need to, to think. Uh, that's it, that's it. Um, I need to thank all my friends, everyone who really helped me in this entire journey. Um, like my team, my girlfriend, my family, my friends. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't want to forget anything, so I just do like this, okay? Friends, family, you know? Uh, so, yeah, that's it. I'm really happy. And I'm not done. I'm not done. I knew something good was gonna happen because I was getting really unlucky <laughs> recently on the other YCS when I went 316 in dice groups. So yeah, it happened. So that's it. Thank you very much, and see you later. Bye bye.